We are developing at the moment a very clear process of innovation to mainstream research to practice and that's been pretty much across the board from the Vice-Chancellor, the Pro-Vice-Chancellors and the Registrar. I think there are times when they worry about the risks but ultimately I think we've been able to pay back in showing them that a research approach to change has been very beneficial for the student learning at Leicester. The Beyond Distance Research Alliance at the University of Leicester was set up by Professor Jilly Salmon in 2005. The Alliance researches new learning technologies and inspires lecturing staff to experiment with these technologies in the physical and virtual laboratory, which is the Media Zoo. The Media Zoo here at the University of Leicester has three versions. It has a physical room which we're sat in now, we have an online version on the internet and we have a version in the 3D world Second Life. It's a way of disseminating the research that is taking place within the Beyond Distance Research Alliance. So we're looking at how the technologies can be best used, how to integrate them successfully, and how to manage the technology for the purpose of teaching. You can just drop these into avatars. So you and can shape that environment and put words like hand out on a button and then someone will right. click it. And yeah, yeah. It that's all customizable. This is really, really useful for us because it enables us to to have a play and to get instant advice and feedback on the expertise that exists within the zoo. The experience of using these technologies in a number of different disciplines allows them to draw out the common messages that they can sort of impart to us. And then the first screen you see when you open up. I think when you can actually see how things can be done in practice, uh, it helps increase that trust between the two bodies, if you like, and then, you, know, get, you get this transfer of knowledge, which is very important. Dr Liz Anderson attended a Media Zoo course and began to see the potential of introducing her geographically dispersed medical students to collaborative and problem-solving tasks via wikis. I had never used wikis before. The zoo enabled us to crystallise our thinking and all the fears that some of the lecturers had about the medium were just resolved. In the wikis, we ended up with this really dynamic concepts and ideas and exchange of information that maybe we wouldn't have had as lecturers. So the students generated extra learning, extra knowledge on that wiki and then discussed them with one another. And it was just very rich and very different and made them think more widely. E-books, sometimes known as e-readers, are one example of a new technology that the Media Zoo has begun to explore as part of a project investigating new ways of delivering the curriculum. The comparison would be seven or eight folders about so big that students would have, and all of that material and much more being loaded onto a small, easily portable e-book reader. I got hold of the e-books and I thought, wow, put it in the hand of every single one of our 7,000 distance learners now. To me it was obvious that we needed to divert the purpose of it for academic use and that's exactly what we're going to do. Dr Gillian Youngs, a lecturer in media and communications, came to the Media Zoo with a need to investigate the practice behind the theory of virtual identity. The Media Zoo's island in Second Life provided a starting point for her research. When you're in a classroom and I'm standing at the front, there's a hierarchy of, you know, it's me teaching these students. Whereas immediately you're in Second Life, that's gone. Because we were exploring in Second Life, and part of it is to share what we're exploring and how we feel about it. It's different to lecture on theory on virtual identity at the same time as sharing the practical experience of what it's like to have a virtual identity. And that's completely taken me onto a new platform about the spaces we teach in and how we relate to students in those spaces. I think not only in this university but generally there's probably been quite a gap between academics and technologists. And low the national e-learning policy has been to sort of increase the use of technology generally in higher education. There's always been this gap, practically speaking, in terms of how you actually innovate. We are responsible, as any researcher is, 
to trying to keep ahead of everything that's happening in our field. And we then try to feed that back through the zoo. That's why we need a whole variety of different kinds of people feeding in. And that's why it is an alliance. The strategy behind the Media Zoo with its four quadrants actually has a designated area for the future. It's known as the Exotics House. When the activities that take place in that quadrant become established, they move across into one of the other areas as new technologies and new ideas continue to feed in. And so having a strategy like the Media Zoo within the institution, specifically targeted at in innovation of technology and taking that into practice, means that the University of Leicester should, in theory, stay ahead of the game because we're designating a specific focus of our work to innovation. Universities are probably the last social enterprise of the 21st century that don't explicitly do innovation in this way. And everybody knows it's difficult to do, but I think we must do this if we're going to serve the students of the future. So it's no mean task and it couldn't be more important 